Dubbed the Baby of the Blue Mountains Line, Lampstone Station opened on 24th of February 1964, 51 years after the line it's on and nearly a century after a railway first reached the area. The station was built by private contractor McGraw Party Limited for Arthur Hand, who developed the township. It is in fact so new that it's the only station on the Blue Mountains line that has been served by electric trains from opening, the wires having gone up in 1957, and celebrated its 50th anniversary as recently as 2014. The next station west, Glenbrook, had opened in 1913, and the next east, Emu Plains, in 1868. The station building at Lapstone, containing toilets, a staff room and a waiting room, dates from the opening day in 1964. It was, however, modified along with the footbridge when the station received its easy access upgrade in 2021, giving the footbridge a ramp to Platform 1 and a lift to Platform 2, bypassing any stairs. A brick building previously stood on Platform 2, but this has since been demolished and replaced with the current shelter. Here's the station in 2018, prior to the easy access upgrade. You can also spot a City Rail era light box in this shot, though the colour coded signs had already gone. This sign is the only City Rail era sign at the station today, albeit the easy access upgrade means passengers no longer pass it. Though Lapstone Station opened in 1964, the railway history of the area actually begins 97 years prior in 1868 with the opening of the Lapstone Zigzag, which included Knapsack Viaduct, this line subsequently being replaced in 1892 with the first Glenbrook deviation and then in 1913 with the second and current one, on which Lapstone is built. I go into this in much more detail in Good Morning Glenbrook. What I didn't mention in the Glenbrook film is Lucasville Station, which was built on the Lapstone Zigzag exclusively to serve the holiday home of Mr. John Lucas, a prominent politician and builder of the time. When opened in 1877, this was the first station in Lapstone, although Lapstone wouldn't exist as a township for another 70 years. The platform closed in 1892 along with the Zigzag, but the remains are still visible today on walking trails. You may have noticed some distinct rock layers in that last clip. When McGraw built the station in the 1960s, it involved digging through a sedimentary dike. I'm no expert on geology, so here's a sign at the station to explain what that is. Pause the video to read and resume when you are done. The suburb's name, and subsequently that of the station, was chosen by Arthur Hand. It refers to a number of water-worn stones in the area which resembled those used by shoemakers to work leather. Shoemakers called their tools lapstones, and as such, hand named the suburb Lapstone. That's all our history, so here's the train you're probably watching this video for. <laughs> <laughs> 